Well, hello there and welcome to our second fall acrylic portrait painting challenge masterclass, how to seal in your sketch and begin your painting confidently. I'm so glad you're here again. Um, it's just been fantastic to teach you here so far. And last time we finished the sketch, um, I've seen some amazing portraits in our Facebook group, um, people doing realistic sketches and they didn't know they'd do it before taking this challenge. They didn't even think it was possible. But the ability that you have shown um, and the, the fortitude just to be able to take on a challenge like this, um, painting a portrait when maybe you've never done it before or you've had limited painting experience, I'm just going to commend you for that and I'm so proud of you. Um, well, we're going to be starting the painting this time so I'm excited to dive into that process and I do again want to say thank you for taking this challenge. If you haven't registered yet, I'd encourage you to do that. Um, you can go to realisticacrylic.com um, fall-acrylic-portrait-painting-challenge fall-acrylic-portrait-painting-challenge and when you register I will send you the welcome kit which will include um, the supplies list you'll get all the paints and materials brushes everything you need to be able to paint along with us you'll also get the gridded reference photo um, and you also get the photo without the grid and these will be the full resolution images. I'll make that available to you so you can then uh, put that on your Kindle or your iPad next to your painting or print it out and set it up next to your painting on the easel. And that way you can paint with confidence knowing that you'll be able to paint exactly what you see. Um, I'll send you the palette layout guide which will show you how to arrange your colors um, so that they don't get muddy when you try to mix them. It'll give you optimal mixing, um, so I'll show you how to do that. And then last but not least, I'll send you all the masterclass lessons. And this is completely free, so each time I put out a new lesson, we're going to have eight of them. This is the second one. Um, I'll be sending that to you via email. So be sure you sign up for the challenge to get these extra uh, components that'll make you uh, be able to paint this portrait with confidence and everything you need to be able to do it well. Um, well, at this point here, I'm going to dive in and just start with a word of prayer like I usually do. Um, I want to get God's help in this. Apart from Him, I can do nothing. With Him, I can do all things. And I encourage you to pray along with me. Father, I ask a blessing on this class. And Lord, you know that, again, I can't do anything apart from you. So please guide my hands, Lord. Help me as I teach this class to communicate everything clearly. Lord, and I pray you bless the students, each and every one of them that are watching. I pray that you'd encourage them that if they are lacking confidence in being able to paint, you give them that confidence. Uh, if they just want to get a little better at portrait painting, go to the next level. I pray that you would help them to know it's possible and that these lessons would be an asset to them toward that end. Father, provide everything they need in terms of brushes and paint and creativity and Keep them safe and healthy, Lord, especially in this time. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, and with that, we're going to dive in. Our first step is to white out the grid lines. So this is where we're at with the sketch. We finished up uh, building an accurate foundation. And like I said before, that is so important. Um, just like a builder wouldn't build a house without a good foundation, you don't want to dive into a painting, especially with the glazing technique, without having that accurate sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect, just has to be accurate. And so that's what we've achieved here. Um, at this point right now, I wanna white out the grid lines. They serve their purpose in helping us to get accurate proportions and a good likeness. But now it's time to fade them out so we don't end up seeing them in the final painting. Uh, so what I want you to do is um, set up your materials um, you'll want to have three different brushes. You'll want to have a round size three or something like that, small round brush. You'll want to have a quarter inch flat and a half inch flat. And that's in your welcome kit, all the different brushes you'll need. But I just want to show you here for this particular lesson. Um, you'll want to have your rinsing container where you can rinse off your brushes, put water in there. Make sure you don't uh, put water in a coffee cup and then end up drinking your paint water. That would not be a good thing. I have your own separate container for rinsing your brushes and a larger one like this is better. Gives you a little more room to get that paint off the bristles. Um, you'll want to have a small 
uh, mixing container and with that you'll put in just a little bit of titanium white. You can squeeze it out of the tube or spoon it out of the jar however you buy your paint. I use Nova Color. That's really, really good paint for this purpose. It's just that perfect consistency for glazing. Um, but here our purpose is not to glaze. We just want to use the paint pretty much full strength and we just want to white out the grid lines. Um, so we're going to take this container of titanium white and I'll just show it to you so you can see how much is in there. Not very much at all. And we're going to start with the larger brush, the half inch brush. And we'll just dip right in and we'll start to white out the grid lines. Start in the upper left corner, work your way from left to right and top down. And we're going to paint all the larger areas. Now when you get into any areas that have shading or detail in your sketch, don't paint over that. Just paint over the areas of the grid line where there's no pencil on there. So we're starting right here and we're just going to use some uh, short choppy strokes in many different directions. And we're just going to work that into the canvas. You want to use a large amount because you can always wipe off the excess back onto the container. Uh, it's a lot harder if you don't have enough on your brush. So use large copious amounts um, not so much that it starts to drip on your canvas, but you know what I mean. Um, we're going to work it into the top area. That's where we kind of have those, the sky and the horizon line with the trees. We're using quite a bit right there. We're going to go into this area here where it would be like the hills. We just want to cover over that just for good measure. It's possible that the glazes might cover it, but just to be on the safe side, we're going to go over that whole area. You can see how much I have on my brush here. It's a good amount of paint. Just allow that to focus. So I just almost scoop up that large of a dollop of paint. And we're just going to apply that right on there and spread it out. Again, brush strokes in many different directions. Kind of smooth it out horizontally. That works very well leave off when you get to those areas that have the shading. You might have to do two layers, but if you can get by with one layer, all the better. So that's why it's good just to use this full strength. We're not dilute, excuse me, <laughs> we're not diluting it with uh, matte medium or uh, water or anything like that. And now we're going to add it here to the tree area. Now notice I'm not putting any paint on the shaded area. I kind of delineated the background a bit and I don't want to put it in those spots. But just on the white. Now, if in case you're wondering, do you seal in the sketch first with matte medium before doing this step? No. No, you're not going to seal in the sketch first. First you're going to put on the white paint and cover over the grid lines. The reason for that is because once you seal in your sketch, um, you're going to have an effect where possibly some of the color is going to bleed out of your pigment from the colored pencil. And then when you would add the titanium white, it wouldn't match and it would stick out like a sore thumb. So this is going to match the uh, color of the white primer or the gesso of your canvas very well. So I don't want you to, uh, to seal it in in this step. That's going to come after this step. So we're just going to work our way down. Like I say, kind of left to right, top down. We might have to kind of work in a circular way. The main, the main idea is just that you don't smear any of your sketch. And try to, try to brush it out you know, enough that you don't have any visual texture or globs of paint or noticeable brush strokes. If you have to, you can wipe off any excess on the side rim of your little condiment container. It's good to not apply too much paint or add too much paint to your brush when you're doing these smaller areas. Um, use the large scoops of paint on your brush when you're doing a very large area. Right here, this is kind of a tiny area here. 
So I'm just barely dabbing it using almost a dry brush kind of a, uh, application. Here I'm going to add a little more paint because this is a somewhat larger area. And if I can get by using this um, half inch brush for the whole process, fantastic. I might need to switch to the smaller brushes, but I'm not going to do it yet until I absolutely have to. Okay, I'm going to work up here a little bit into this area, just wherever I don't have any pencil, only the grid lines. When I say pencil, I mean the colored pencil that you use for the sketch. Keep moving down, but let's uh, let's just work on her face a little bit. This is where we really want to use some extra care. You don't want to use too much paint, so because that could add some unwanted texture, and that'll make it harder for you to glaze. So make sure you don't apply too much to the face. You can always come back in with another layer if you need to. And another thing you might ask is, can I use gesso for this? I would say no, do not use gesso. Use titanium white paint. Gesso has that ground pumice in it and it gives more texture than you'll want. But titanium white will actually cover better than gesso, believe it or not. It's got a little more opacity. Um, so definitely use titanium white for this and not gesso. Alright, so I'm just adding this um, to the large areas and I have to be careful that I don't go over, especially those lines that show her, uh, her uh, whatever, facial decorations. Okay, now we're going to go down to the second half, the bottom half of the painting. Just filling in these areas. Now if you need to thin out your paint, you know, especially if you're using um, paint from a tube, it might be a little too thick, you might have to thin it out just a bit. Um, you'll have to get a gauge for that. But the last thing you want to do is have a lot of unwanted texture on there. So if you need to thin it out with a little water, you can do that. Um, you can just spray a little water with a spray bottle that'll work well. Or you can uh, just dip your brush into a little bit of water, like you're rinsing water, and then just add it into the paint. Kind of swirl it around just like this. You dip your brush in the water, swirl it around, and just kind of use the paint that's on the side right here. That's a little bit thinned out. That's one way of thinning it out if you need to. We're just going to continue applying this all along these large areas. I'll come back in with a smaller brush if I need to. I just want to fill in the larger areas right now. This should take you uh, maybe 15 minutes or so. Um, it's going to take a little longer in this one than some paintings because there's so much detail and we have to paint around all that detail and be extra careful. Okay, we're going to get this area over here. Like I say, I'm just kind of working top down, left to right. Now let's put this paint on the inside area of her chest. And you might think, um, do I have to cover over the grid lines when her skin is dark? I would say yes, because the highlighted portion of her skin is not as dark as you think. Um, and we just, we just don't want to have those grid lines to compete with. We don't have to. So I would, I would wipe them out anyway. Put a little bit here in this area. I might have to come in with a smaller brush for some of these details on the neck.
Here I use a little too much paint, so I have to very delicately work around the objects, making sure I don't paint on top of them. You might want to switch to a smaller brush as you get to those areas. I'm definitely going to do that. I'm just going to fill in this large area below. Okay, just try to thin it out and use some strokes going horizontally or vertically to smooth it out. I'm going to get this large area here on her sleeve with this brush, trying not to hit any of my detail work. And then just on this outside edge of her arm a little bit. Now I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. I'm going to take the uh, quarter inch flat, get a little more precision. No, I tell you what, I'm going to go to the round because that quarter inch flat isn't quite doing it. I need something with even more precision yet. So I'm going to just fill in this area on her neck. Anywhere where you have shadows, like right here, this area here below her chin, you don't have to glaze over any of the shadows, just leave those be. Um, because those areas will be dark enough that you won't see the grid lines through it. Just the areas that are would end up being lighter in value on your painting. And you should be able to tell that because if you did your sketch according to my instructions, uh, you would have shaded in the areas that would be dark and that would tell you to um, not paint white on top of them. Just going to get a couple more areas here. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to leave those areas alone on the interior, except any areas where maybe I don't have any shading, like right in here. I can just dab it quickly. And then on the area on her chest, I do want to hit that a little bit with the brush, but I have to be really careful because. I've got a lot of details and some of the sketches I've seen in the Facebook group added more lines than I did. So if you have tons of lines uh, delineating the fabric, then be really careful as you put white paint on top of it, not to obscure those lines or mix into it and muddy it up. Here I didn't really add a lot because this area is more highlighted and it wasn't necessary to add every line on the top here. Um, so I can get away with adding the white paint to white it out. On this top edge of the kind of hem of her blouse, I'm going to add some of that white paint to mute out the grid lines. On this edge, I have a strong vertical line. I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm just going to add a little bit here to restore um, an area that got a bit blurry. It, it kind of got smeared, so I'm going to just restore this highlight by adding some white right here on her shoulder. Um, it's probably not necessary to add it to her hair. That's dark enough of a value. It's not going to really make a difference. Um, let's see, maybe just a couple spots in the interior shadow side of her blouse. And then down here at the waistline, as it gets into the waistline, we'll add a little bit there. All right. And I think, uh, I think that's good. I might want to go over this with one more layer. I'm not going to show that on video, um, but you certainly can do that. I think I probably will hit this everything or most everything with another layer. You can just kind of take a look at it and see, you know, what areas have the grid lines bleeding through. And then if you want to go over it with another layer, even in just a few select spots, you certainly can do that. 
Uh, but what you want to do is just let this um, layer dry, uh, probably for about 30 minutes or so to an hour. Uh, depends on your conditions, how humid it is in your environment, what the temperature is. But in a nice dry room temperature environment, 30 minutes or so should be enough for this layer to dry. And once it's completely dry, you're just going to want to touch it and make sure it is dry to the touch and it's not cold because coldness indicates moisture underneath. Once it's completely dry, then you can do another layer on top. And then finally, let that dry for another 30 minutes to an hour, making sure it's completely dry. And then you'll be able to go to the next step, which is sealing in the canvas, preparing it for paint. And I'll see you in that step. This step we're gonna seal in the canvas. What you wanna do is take a spray bottle like this, and we're just gonna open it up. And you can see how much water I have in here, just a little bit of water on the bottom. And I'd say maybe at about a, oh, two thirds ratio to one third ratio, that is two thirds water to one third matte medium, or even less, maybe uh, three quarter water to one quarter matte medium. Just put in a few little squirts of matte medium into your container. And we'll put in a little bit more. Yeah, that actually that actually might be closer to a 50% ratio. Um, but something like this, we're going to shake it up. You just want it uh, thin enough that we can still spray it on here. And then what we want to do is really shake it up good. So with this step, we're going to basically pre-seal the canvas in. Uh, because in the past we had some issues in our last challenge with uh, students' canvases smearing when we tried to apply uh, the matte medium straight to the colored pencil. I don't want to have that happen to you. So instead, with this step here, I think that's going to safeguard against it. And I've tried it before and it does work. Um, so this is going to pre-seal your canvas in. And we're just going to shake this up, like I said, really good. And we're just going to spray. So have your canvas flat on a table. And we're just going to spray the canvas. You might have to spray it a few times to get the matte medium to come out. And we're just going to spray it on here now. Hopefully I can get it to spray just a few spots here and there. And you might actually, you could actually try spraying it while the canvas is vertical on your easel and then rest it on the table afterwards so you don't get drips. If you find that it's not spraying for you, um, if you have it kind of at this angle. We just basically want to cover over everything Make sure none of the spots are missed and kind of look over it. Make sure you see some glossy spots. That tells us that we've covered everything with uh, matte medium. And what's going to happen then is the water is going to evaporate off of this. And it'll dry to a nice flat finish. Um, so don't be concerned if you see some puddles of water that will evaporate. It will dry. And once it's dry the matte medium will remain after the water evaporates and it'll fix this in enough here that you'll be able to go over this then um, with a layer uh, of matte medium with your brush. So let's let this dry for oh maybe about a half an hour. So work on another project or do something else, come back to it and then we'll go ahead and we'll put on that actual sealing layer of matte medium. All right, and now that your canvas is pre-sealed and you've confirmed that it's completely dry, you just wanna touch it and make sure there's no moisture at all. Um, then you'll wanna go over with an actual layer of matte medium that you'll brush on. So you can take a one inch flat brush. If you have a larger one available, um, I have a larger one over here like this, you could use that, but um, because I didn't put this in the supplies list, I'm just going to do it with a smaller one inch flat and, and you can do that as well. It just takes more brushing to make it happen. Um, so you take your matte medium, you should have it in a container like this where it's easy to squirt onto your canvas. Even if you purchase it from Nova Color in bulk, I always like to refill one of these containers here. 
and that makes it so easy to apply. Um, so what we're going to do is just squirt some matte medium kind of here, there, and everywhere on the canvas. Just cover it um, something like this. And that should be enough. It doesn't have to be a huge, huge copious amount, but just enough to cover it. Then we're just going to spread this out. And you might have a little bit of bleeding, but it shouldn't be much since we pre-sealed this. And you're just going to basically go over the whole thing and smooth it out. I might have put a little too much on there um, because I don't want to have don't want to have it smearing. So you can wipe the excess off in a rag. Well, it is a little bit wasteful, but um, the larger amount you have on there, the less chance of it smearing. Um, because having a large amount kind of shields the bristle action from disturbing the pigment on your canvas. And I would rather that you waste a little matte medium than have a smeared sketch on your hands. So just really smooth this out as best you can. Scoop off the excess, wipe it off on a rag. Uh, this is just an old towel, so it's good to have that. You could use newspaper if you want, but just something where you can wipe it off. And... It's okay if this gets a little bit cloudy because we would normally mute this a little bit anyway. Typically over brushing uh, matte medium will make it cloudy and that's something you want to avoid when you're uh, varnishing. Of course you won't use matte medium for that. You would end up using um, matte varnish. I'm just wiping off some of the excess. I want to just make sure I have this covered really well. and. Just make sure you don't have a lot of extra dollops of paint on there that would cause textural problems. Once you really have it, you know, where everything is covered and there's no bare spots of canvas, then you can start to smooth this out using some linear strokes like this. Back and forth, back and forth. And then you're going to come back and do the same thing again until you confirm that you have no um, unwanted textural areas on the canvas. And our final strokes are going to end up getting a little bit lighter, so you're going to use lighter pressure as you go on. I'm still kind of wiping off some of this excess here. Okay, now I'm just going to use some very light strokes to smooth it out, and I'm just going in one direction. See that just going in one direction. So away from me and then toward me. That's what seems to work best for me the way I'm doing this. should have everything smoothed out here after this. Now if you used a larger brush it would make it a lot faster. I just wanted to demonstrate it to you using a one inch flat. But if you have a two inch flat that would be better. But since uh, many people have already bought their supplies I don't want to use uh, something that you don't have available to demonstrate with. Now I'm just going to take a look at it, make sure everything looks flat. And you, you might see a few little um, brush strokes, but um, it should end up smoothing out really well. Just getting a few of the edges on the top. Yeah, after this dries, it should should dry nice and flat and there shouldn't be a lot of um, texture on here. But you do want to make sure you brush it vertically with the direction of the orientation of the canvas. You don't want to brush it horizontally. Um, it's just something in painting, uh, even it's even in house painting as well and other things, you always want to paint in the direction of the orientation of the surface. It just looks a lot better. So. Um, this is what you'll have then uh, when it's finished and you want to let this dry again for about a half an hour, about 30 minutes. And once you confirm that it's all dry, 
Um, and you might actually want to wait even closer to an hour. It depends on your circumstances, level of humidity and temperature. But once you confirm that it's completely dry, not cold underneath, um, then you're ready to move to the next step, which will be, um, in this case, muting the canvas and toning the canvas. And I'm going to have to see uh, if that's something we want to do or to what degree we want to do it. So I will see you in the next step. Now that our canvas is completely dry from the previous sealing layer and we have it back up on the easel and it's nice and vertical again, the next step is to add the muting or the toning layer. And to do that, what we want to do is mix um, some raw sienna, titanium white, and some raw umber dark together with a generous amount of matte medium. Now the purpose of the muting or the toning layer um, the first reason for applying this is to make the sketch a lot easier to paint on top of. It's easier to transition out of the sketch and into the painting. Um, we don't want to have this painting look like a colorized sketch. And if the sketch lines are too dark, it's going to be very difficult to overcome that, um, even with several glazes. Um, so the muting layer is just going to soften up that sketch a little bit, make it look a lot more appropriate like a painting ought to. And then the next reason we want to apply this muting or this toning layer um, is just to give the canvas an overall warmth that we can work into just so it's not stark white. And uh, we're not going to be coloring it too much, but just, just slightly. And I think you're going to like the warmth that we achieve here with this layer. Um, so what I'm going to do is take my condiment container here and I'm going to take a generous amount of matte medium. And just squirt this in here. And it should just fill it about maybe halfway or a little bit over halfway. And then I'm going to start with a little bit of titanium white. That's going to be uh, the most predominant color, the largest amount in this recipe, so to speak. Um, I guess the largest ingredient would be your matte medium, but second to that will be titanium white. And you want the ratio of matte medium to paint. Um, you want it to be very, very slight. So we're looking at 95% matte medium, 5% paint. And uh, we're just going to take a little dab and I'm going to put it on this palette knife. Now, I didn't have that in the supplies list, I, I don't think. But you can use anything, a piece of cardboard or a spoon or the end of a brush, whatever works. But we're just going to take a little dab of titanium white, just a dollop like this just to show it to you so you can see that. Just a little dollop. And we're going to add that right to the side of this cup. I'm just going to show it to you here so you can see what that looks like. So just a little dollop there on the side. And then I'm going to wipe this off on a rag. And I'm going to take a little bit of raw sienna. Again, I just want to get a little dab on this palette knife here. A smaller dab, because this is going to go a little further than the other color. And I'm just going to, again, wipe that off on the side of this container. Wipe that off, and then I'm going to take a little bit of raw umber dark. And again, just a little dab of that. And we're going to put that on the side. So you, if you look at the container, you can see these little dabs I have here. And you should have something like that. And we're just going to take the matte medium and, and slowly stir that into the mix. Just slowly stir that into the mix and kind of wipe this up along the side here so we can really get that in thoroughly. Now the reason I put this on the side is so that when you brush into it um, you're not hitting large copious unmixed amounts on the bottom of your container here. And when you um, dip your brush into this. Make sure you dip on the opposite side that you put those little dollops. Just 
dip out of the other side and then you won't get any large amounts that aren't mixed. But really, really stir this well. Stir it a lot more than you think you need to because you don't want to have streaks. So we're just going to keep stirring, keep stirring. Okay, that should be good. And then what we want to do is just test this color. And so you can take a, just a piece of white paper, I call it my white card. And if it has some text on it, that's even better. Take a piece of white paper that maybe has some text, just grab it from your printer, and just apply it on top and see what it looks like. You might want to use a brush just so you can get a sense for what it looks like when it's thin. So we can see the color that we have here already. And I think based on that, I'm just going to add a, just a little more titanium white because it's not, I'll show you this here, it's not obscuring the text as much as I'd like. And the uh, color of the raw sienna, the yellowish color is a bit strong. So I'm just going to take another little dab of titanium white, uh, a little smaller dollop than what I had before something about like this just to show it to you here and I'm just going to again put that on the side and I'm going to start stirring it in and really stir this well and we're just going to kind of tone down the yellowish color of the raw sienna with this here really want to stir it well wipe off my palette knife. I'm going to add a little more matte medium just to dilute it. Maybe just bring this up to about three quarters full. And again, we're going to really, really stir this well. And then let's uh, dip in and using this flat brush, just kind of see where we're at and how it covers over. And you can see that made a little bit of a change there on the text. Um, it did lighten up the text and it's changed the color a little bit. Now I'm going to test it on the canvas and I'm going to have just a, a rag available so that I can wipe it if I need to. Um, and a spray bottle to dilute it if I have to, but it, let's just test it on the canvas here and we'll, we'll start in the upper corner and really see how this looks. Just go over this, see how that looks. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not bad, but that's actually just a bit too yellow, so let's wipe that off. I'm just going to spray this quick. I'll just wipe this off. I don't think I want it to be quite that strong. Well, sometimes you get it right the first try, and sometimes you have to just to dilute it a little bit more. So add a little more matte medium to the mix. Thin it out just a bit more. Okay, and this should do it. I'm just going to take my one inch flat and start applying this. Just going to start here in the upper left hand corner and work our way down. And we're just
just going to use vertical strokes going from top down left to right. Now you don't want to, the reason why we want to make this uh, muting layer very translucent is that if for some reason it doesn't mute the sketch enough, I can always come back in with another layer. If I go too strong on this, um, it's going to be really hard to get that sketch back. But this is good. You just want it just to slightly mute it down and um, to avoid having streaks, really brush it thoroughly and really keep that vertical action going top down, left to right. We're just going to keep really adding this in and use very firm pressure at the beginning and then lighten it up at the end and that will really help to smooth it out. It will give you an arm workout, that's for sure. And when you get to her face, that's a place to really be careful. Also, really make sure you're dipping from the center. I just caught myself dipping from the side and I had some color that went into it that was a little strong. Just add a little bit more here. And some diagonal brush strokes a little bit to smooth it out and then follow up with vertical strokes. Alright, this is what your canvas should look like after this last step of sealing it in and preparing it with a muting or a toning layer and it should just have a slight, slight warmth to it and your sketch should be muted just a tiny bit. Um, so at this step here, we're gonna call this lesson finished. Um, of course, in the next series, we're gonna be diving into the actual painting process. I was kinda hoping to do it with this lesson, but I don't want it to get too lengthy, but we will go right into the painting process of applying uh, your first initial colors and getting the value structure down. That's gonna be our topic for lesson number three. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you did, leave me a comment below in this video. Uh, get a hold of me via email and make sure you sign up for the challenge so you can get the supplies list and you can get the lessons emailed to you along with the gridded reference photo and everything else you need to be able to paint along with us. Uh, thank you so much and be sure to post your progress in the Facebook group if you're signed up for that and uh, let me know how I can help. If you have any questions on this lesson where I can give you a little clarity, I would love to be able to do that. And of course, you can get a hold of me here in the comments section below this video. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Give this video a thumbs up, share the challenge with your friends, and they'll appreciate that, and I'll appreciate it as well. Uh, so thank you so much again for watching. God bless. We'll see you in the next lesson.